This video is sponsored by Rhizom Lab, the creators of my unwrapping software of choice, Rhizom UV. During the upload month of this video, my viewers can enjoy a 20% discount on Rhizom UV by going to rhizomlab.com and using the code DIGITALMEAT at the checkout. I will also be giving away 10 free licenses for Rhizom UV during this month, so make sure you're following me on Facebook and keep an eye out for those giveaway posts. Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and in this Cinema 4D quick tip, I want to show you how you can introduce wrinkles to the surface of a polygon object. So let's get stuck in. Uh, I'm going to create a sphere in my scene and make it sit on the floor. Uh, something else before I begin. Uh, I've got a scene set up. I've just got a floor, sky, some lights, and a camera. And um, this tutorial is not really to do with that, so I'm going to close that back up and move on. So I've got my sphere in the middle of our scene. I'm going to apply this material to it and we're also going to um, let's have a look at the sphere like this okay let's uh, let's add some more segments to this say 50 and I'm also going to change the sphere type from standard to hexahedron and this just guarantees that all the um, all the polygons in this model are quads whereas if uh, you've got the standard you've got a load of triangles at the top there so uh, yeah I'm going to flip over to hexahedron Good stuff. I'm also going to make this shape editable now. Uh, let's go back to our other view by pressing NA. That takes us back to ground shading. I'm going to select our sphere and I'm going to hold Alt and click on this here. That'll add a subdivision surface. By holding Alt it makes it a parent of our object. And I'm going to do something similar by selecting the sphere again and adding the main component uh, of this technique by holding Shift, going to our deformer menu and dropping down and uh, selecting smoothing. By holding shift this will make it a child of our sphere. Okay, now that's in place we can see all the settings for this. Uh, under type you'll see that we've got smooth. Now this behaves much like the brush tool uh, set to smooth, apart from it applies it to the entire object, unless you're defining some kind of map, like a vertex map. We're not going to use this, that's not what we, what we want. I'm going to flip over to relax here. Now, relax, the whole point of relax is to basically simulate a cloth-like surface. Uh, if you look at the Cinema 4D documentation, it'll actually tell you this. Um, so we flipped over to relax, and now all of our settings are greyed out, and that's because we need to press this initialize button. The deformer needs to recognize the state of the object before we make changes. So I'm gonna hit initialize, and as you can see, in, under memory here it says 36 kilobytes so it's stored the position of all the points there. Now if we were to leave it like this and actually work on our object, in fact let's just do that to see what it looks like. I'm going to press MI, that will select the magnet tool and make sure our sphere is selected. I can start actually shifting the surface of this around. Now you can see that it's almost like it's some kind of uh, clay or plastic or something like that and um, that's not what we really want. We want it to be more cloth-like, um, so it wrinkles up. So if we go back to our smoothing deformer, we can actually restore this back to what it was by pressing the restore button, and we can make some changes here. So the iterations, this uh, pertains to how many times the algorithm is run. As you can see, it's set to 10. I want to go higher than this, I'm going to go to 40. So that means that the algorithm that actually runs this smoothing deformer is run, is run more, many more times than we had. The stiffness is currently set at 30%. Now for a cloth where we want to introduce lots of wrinkles, we don't really want it to try and retain its structure. We kind of want it to fold up on itself. Um, so we want it to be less stiff. So I'm going to knock this all the way down to 0% and hit initialize again. Then I'm going to go back to our sphere already on the magnet tool and I'm going to start moving stuff around again so as you can see it's kind of bunching up on itself and it's much more cloth like as a surface now and you can really start authoring wrinkles and getting those you know those tight wrinkles together it really sort of stretches the surface there we go we're getting something very much like cloth now so I'm just going to go back to our smoothing 
It makes me wonder, actually. Let's restore this um, and crank our iterations up to 60 and see if that makes a difference. Let's initialize again. Go back to our sphere and start pushing points around again. Yeah, you can see that there's a lot more wrinkles there now. So it's, it's a little bit of a balancing act between sort of the iterations and, uh, you know, in my opinion, knock the, um, knock the stiffness down and you'll get a much more uh, cloth-like effect. Now, I'm sure you can all recognize the great uses this, this could be used for, whether it be introducing uh, wrinkles to clothes or uh, bedding and fabrics, maybe the surface of a, a sofa cushion or something like that. You can get really good results very, very quickly. And of course, um, if we actually go to a different view and look at this, we can see the mesh is quite heavy. But there's no reason that you couldn't bake this out to a, um, you know, a map of some kind or a displacement map and then apply it to a lower lower poly object. So an object that describes the same basic shape but for all this detail is baked into a normal map or something like that. So anyway, that was, uh, that was quite quick. It was a bit rough and ready, but I just wanted to make you guys aware that there is a way that you can do, uh, you can author cloth wrinkles in Cinema 4D. Hope that was helpful. See you next time. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can follow me on social media at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. And make sure to visit me at digitalmeet.uk where you can vote for upcoming tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.